So, okay, guys, let's move on. Hi, everyone, once again. My name is Valentin, and I am a .NET developer at Sociale. And today, I would like to talk uh, about the performance. The performance of the .NET application depends on many factors. Some of the biggest performance issues in almost any .NET application come down to string operation. They are quite expensive since strings are immutable in .NET, so any concatenation will allocate a new object in memory. To prevent this new allocation and improve the performance, the string builder actually was created, but it does not always improve the performance. Uh, so I divided my presentation into several parts. First, I will give you a brief string builder overview, and then we will look at the string builder performance pitfalls and possible ways to avoid them resulting in improved performance. My presentation will take about 40 minutes, and if you have any questions, feel free to ask me. So, string builder is a mutable string class. Mutability means that uh, once an instance of the class has been created, it can be modified by appending, removing, replacing, or inserting characters. The string builder object maintains a buffer to accommodate expansion to the string. New data is appended to the buffer if room is available. Otherwise, a new larger buffer is allocated. Data from the original buffer is copied to new buffer, and the new data is then appended to the new buffer. The string builder length property indicates the number of characters the string builder object currently contains. If you add characters to the string builder object, its length increases until it equals the size of the string builder capacity property, which defines the number of characters that the object can contain. If the number of added characters causes the length of the string builder object to exceed its current capacity, new memory is allocated. The value of the capacity property is doubled, new characters are added to the string builder object, and its length property is adjusted. Additionally, memory of the string builder object is allocated dynamically until it reaches the value defined by the string builder max capacity property. When the maximum capacity is reached, no further memory can be allocated for the string builder object and trying to add characters or expand it beyond its maximum capacity throws an exception. As you can see, the default capacity of string builder object is 16 characters and its default maximum capacity is the max value of int32. Although the string builder class generally offers better performance than the string class, you should not automatically replace string with string builder wherever you want to manipulate strings. Performance depends on the size of the string, the amount of the memory to be allocated for the new string, the system on which your application is executing and the type of operation. Uh, during this presentation, I will try to do some benchmarking to see if this really is the case. And actually, I think we will be a little surprised by the results. So as a tool for measuring performance, I will use the benchmark.net NuGet package. It's free, easy to use, and uh, allows you to quickly get the required performance measurements of individual methods. The package was used uh, for the following configuration. As you can see, I used it on the Intel Core i7 uh, Whiskey Lake processor. Uh, I used the latest version of the .NET Core SDK. And um, the result output is quite flexible. As you can see, I used uh, the following uh, format. Uh, which demonstrates our uh, mean value, error, standard deviation, and uh, all that uh, required for the displaying the memory, uh, all the generation of the garbage collector memory and the value of allocated memory. So let's see at several pitfalls. As you probably know, when you can concatenate in strings, a new string object is allocated populated with content, and eventually garbage collected. To prevent this new allocation and improve performance, actually the string builder class was created. But let's look at some examples of concatenation. So here we can see the four methods. 
when I'm using the different uh, types of concatenation. We are using regular concatenation. We are using uh, concatenation with string format. We are using string builder with its append method. And we are using interpolation. So let's see on the results. So here we can see the results of the benchmarking of each of these methods. And uh, as we can see, actually string builder does not offer any advantages against a single expression concatenation with a small number of strings. And actually this is correct and a little su surprised. Uh, but uh, let's look at an example of concatenating multiple expressions. So here we can see another one method with multi-expression concatenation in different ways. So in first method, we concatenate uh, with uh, 10,000 concatenations. So string size is 10,000. In second method, we use the creation of new string builder objects. And in the third method, we, uh, <clears throat> we are using the already created string builder object. So let's see. Oh, sorry. Let's see at the results. And the results are the following. So as you can see, regular concatenation are more efficient than string builder for a small number of concatenations. Depending on string sizes, using string builder becomes more efficient with the big um, quantity of concatenation and actually with over 10 or 50 concatenations. Also, string builder can be optimized by reusing the same instance. This can make a difference for very frequent usages, um, like logging or some kind of uh, runtime telemetry from some equipment, let's say. So the main idea here is that we can use string builder for multiply concatenation, as it will help us to reduce the allocations and in fact to improve the performance. Do you have any questions here? No? Okay, so let's move forward. So the second one pitfall. Net provides a lot of collections type like list, dictionary, etc. etc. Think builder as well as all those collections have dynamic size capacity. That means they automatically expand in size as you add more items. Whenever the collection reaches its size limit, it will allocate a new larger memory buffer, usually an array doubled in size. That means an additional allocation and deallocation. So let's look at the example here. So here we have two methods. Uh, one of them just creating a new string builder object without the defined size. And the second one is uh, with defined size, it's fixed capacity, it's 10,000 items. And let's see the results. So the results are the following. So here we can see that by setting the capacity, we saved in performance time. In practice, the improvement in performance is probably even greater because Benchmark.net performs garbage collections before and after each benchmark run. So the main point here is setting the initial capacity of the string builder will help us to avoid uh, a big amount of allocations and can help us to improve the performance actually in time. Any questions here? No, okay, let's move forward. So the third pitfall is connected to append method of the string builder object and how it uh, influences the concatenation. So let's see the couple of examples. <clears throat> Here we have two methods. We are trying to append lines. And in first um, method, we just using the append line and concatenation as a parameter in it. And in the 
second method we are using just an append method like a concatenation and after that we're just appending the line. And now let's see to the results of Bachmanke. So for 10,000 items, the results for the code. You can see that the second code is faster and allocates less memory. Also note that internally append use a span formatable uh, interface to avoid allocations while converting the number to string. So in this case, um, I would suggest to you to call append multiply times instead of concatenating strings. Any questions? Okay, let's move on. The next one, pitfall, is related to addition of uh, one separate character to the string. If you need to add a single character, I think you should append the uh, char method to use instead of append string. Let's see why. Here we have a couple of examples of um, appending um, just one character. We are using the uh, appending of string of one character and we are using the append of one char character and also we are using the append line methods with string and method append and append line with char. And let's see the results of benchmarking. So, the append char method is about 40% faster, as you can see from this table. So, if you need to add a single character, you should use append char instead of append string. And it would be much faster than just appending the one character during the stream. Any questions? Okay, let's move on. Then let's talk a little about the append format method. And let's check uh, if it's really allocates the least memory. Let's see the example. So here we are using uh, the several methods. For this benchmark, it's uh, just to string, it's string format, and we are using the append format. And actually we are going to mm, add to string builder uh, just a number 14 in different ways. So let's see the results. From 10,000 uh, items, the results were the following. As you can see here, and using to string is a little bit faster, as you can see. But append format is the one that allocates the least memory. So in this case, uh, I would suggest you use append format instead of append string format. Any questions here? No, okay, let's move on. And let's talk about the append and uh, its overload version with read-only span chart. Is it really allocate less memory? Let's check it out. So here we have several methods in our benchmark. And we are just using the substring, using append method, and using span methods in case of append a span and a span slice. And I think let's see on the results that we have here. So here I will suggest you instead of using string builder, you can use a overload of append that supports start index and length. It is like substring except it does not need to create the intermediate string, so it allocates less memory. In netcore, you can also use a span char to create a substring. Any questions here? No? Okay, let's move on. And let's talk about append join. The string builder append join method only exists in netcore. So um, some people may know about it or may not. So I think you should use it instead of using string join. And let's see why. 
So here we can see the two methods. In one method, we are using string join. And in the second method, we are using append join to append the characters to the string builder object. And let's see the results. So for 10,000 items, the results were the following. As you can see, append join is a little quicker, but it's just actually like a string join, but just quicker in time. Any questions here? Okay, no questions. Let's go forward. So, if you use a lot of string builder, you may want to use a reusable pool of string builder to avoid lots of allocation. Instead of creating a new instance of string builder when you need it, you get an existing one from the pool. Then you return the instance to the pool once you finish it. This means that you'll spend less time in garbage collecting. Let's see the, an example. So here we have two methods, using string builder without pool and using string builder with pool. And let's see the results. And the results of benchmarking is following. So it seems to be um, a little bit slower, but it reduced drastically the allocations. So I think it's useful to use um, string builder with pool. So now let's talk about the Microsoft suggestions about strings and actually string builder, because it's um, actually not so clear when we should use string class and string builder class. So Microsoft recommends using the string class in the following cases. With a small number of operations and changes on the lines, when performing a fixed number of match operations, in this case the compiler can combine all the union operations into one. When you need to perform large scale search operation when building a string such as index of or start with, because the string builder class has no such method. And let's see how about string builder class. So the string builder class is recommended for use in the following cases with an unknown number of operations and changes on lines during program execution. And when it's assumed that an application will have to do many similar operations. So the main idea here is um, we are looking at some pitfalls of the string builder. And summarizing the above, you probably notice that all of the above optimizations and pitfalls make use of one or more of the following core concepts. Allocating should be avoided if possible. So in your application, when you're working with a large amount of data, of string data, uh, you should uh, consider that you should uh, avoid some kind of extra allocation. So please use string builder here. Single expression concatenations will have the best performance with regular concatenation of the string interpolation syntax. So actually when you are using in your application uh, not so big amount of string data, you should use just a string class. It would be enough for you, for your application to not hurt in the performance and uh, to not uh, hurt the time uh, you spent to concatenate strings. And for many concatenations, still builder is still king. Uh, actually, this is it. Uh, I can share you some information from the real life. Uh, I had an experience working on uh, space industry and uh, writing um, software for the spacecraft. So in this case, we have uh, a lot of strings because we had a lot of telemetry data each day uh, at runtime. 
and uh, we should create uh, a lot of reports, a lot of strings, and uh, just to not hurt the performance and uh, the time, we are used the string builder, and uh, it was quite useful for us. Uh, we spent uh, less time on uh, any conversion of strings, and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. So. Also, the string builder class generally offers better performance than string class. You should automatic you should not automatically replace string with string builder wherever you want to manipulate string. So please be careful in your applications when you're using not uh, big amounts of data, please use string class. And if you're using uh, a lot of string data and you need to concatenate them, just use string builder and Try to avoid the pitfalls that we are covered in this presentation. And uh, I think if you have some questions, I will be happy to answer them. <laughs>